Yeah, we have seen the theory of operation of uh, accelerometer that is um, um, seismic uh, pickup. Yeah, that is seismic pickup. Seismic pickup used as accelerometer. Now, in this, we know the uh, uh, main construction is uh, mass supported by a spring Ks, spring constant, and a damper uh, with a damping coefficient b. Um, by measuring XO, that is the relative displacement of the mass with reference to the frame of the instrument, we are measuring. That is XO, we are measuring by say an LVDT or any other displacement measuring uh, instrument and that reading is calibrated in terms of acceleration, input acceleration. That is what you have learnt uh, by theory and all we derived equations. But what is the physical explanation for this functioning? Now see, uh, for that you just uh, analyze this case. Suppose the acceleration is uh, just upwards, yeah? uh, only one direction, a static, a constant acceleration is acting x i 2 dot. In that case, uh, the uh, mass also getting accelerated to the extent of uh, x i 2 dot, x i 2 dot to the same extent this also accelerated. So, to accelerate the mass m, we should have the force, without force no mass can be accelerated. So, necessary force to accelerate the mass should come only through either spring or through the damper because uh, mass is suspended and uh, these are the two routes through which the force can reach the mass m. And uh, now since it is a constant acceleration, there is no change, uh, there is no force can be transmitted through uh, the damper because damper output will be proportional to the uh, relative speed of mass and the frame. So since uh, there is no relative speed, it is a constant acceleration it is moving. So, uh, be uh, through a damper, no force can be transmitted. So, force can be transmitted only because B uh, x i x o 2 dot proportional to that only force can be transmitted through B. So, the force can be now it can be transmitted only through spring alone. So, the necessary force goes through spring. When a force goes through a spring, this spring gets compressed. That is how the, the compression of the spring that is nothing but the relative motion of the mass with reference to the frame that is x o is proportional to the force that is going through the spring. That, that force is proportional to x i 2 dot. That is how x o is a function of, uh, x o represents the x i 2 dot or x o is a function of x i 2 dot. So, by measuring x o, we get a inference, we get a measure of x i 2 dot. That is acceleration. That is exp physical explanation how relative measurement, the displacement measurement gives rise to acceleration measurement in this instrumentation. Now, we see the uh, loading of loading of uh, mounting of mounting of accelerometer accelera accelerometer that is what is loading effect when we mount an instrument over a vibrating body this is what we are going to connect to a vibrating body yeah this is vibrating body to this we bolt this accelerometer whole instrument is fixed on the uh, vibrating body, this is vibrating to uh, up and down. So, when you mount such a uh, um, instrument on the vibrating body, whether the amplitude of the uh, amplitude or the magnitude of acceleration will get affected because we are bringing extra mass over the vibrating body. So, acceleration may get affected that is called uh, loading effect, uh, loading, uh, loading of uh, loading effect, this is not loading, loading effect of loading effect of mounting of this accelerometer. We have to check by mounting this instrument whether we affected our measured measure, our, our measured quantity that you have to check. For that you do one you do the following. First mount this instrument to the vibrating body, make a measurement say A1 acceleration 1 that is uh, with, with, uh, with the accelerometer alone on the accelerometer with the accelerometer we got a reading A1 and then next uh, you put uh, uh, you make another measurement A2 with uh, the accelerometer plus some weight, some weight, you put uh, some more weight say one or two books also just to put it there uh, equal to the uh, of the order of the same weight you put and then make another measurement A2. Now, if the difference between A2 and A1 or A1, A1 minus A2 is a very small one. yeah is small, is very small. If the difference is very small, that means mounting of the uh, accelerometer does not give rise to any loading effect because 
even uh, after adding some more weight, the reading is not changed. So naturally, the uh, accelerometer alone has not given rise to any loading effect. This, that is explain that that is how we check after making measurements we check whether mounting of accelerometer has given rise to any loading effect that we have to check if it is uh, the if it is giving rise to loading effect suppose the difference is much that means the accelerometer you have selected for this measurement is a wrong one we should go for a lighter version of the accelerometer mostly you will find piezoelectric uh, uh, piezoelectric accelerometer which we have we have seen already piezoelectric accelerometer is the choice but the problem here is uh, the uh, acceleration should be a varying quantity um, omega should be omega minimum of the order say about 10 hertz or 15 hertz depending upon the piezoelectric accelerometer so it should be varying quantity in that case we can go for another uh, i mean this piezoelectric accelerometer or if it is static measurement naturally we go for a lighter version next is inertial uh, inertial navigation inertial navigation that is the usage of accelerometer usage usage of accelerometer in inertial navigation what is inertial navigation finding out the location of the ship or aircraft or a rocket after it takes off from a station or uh, or from a harbor uh, after say one or two days where exactly the ship is located we can find out by using a set of accelerometers for that purpose what people are using is um, uh, so called uh, um, it is called uh, platform in, uh, that is stabilized platform yeah stabilized platform There will be a stabilized platform in the vehicle which we want to, uh, whose position we are interested to uh, locate after certain time of starting or after taking off. So the stabilized platform, it has got a particular property. Suppose we have got a ship. So suppose this is the ship traveling in this direction and there will be a stabilized platform somewhat like this. Suppose ship turns, ship turns like this, after some time you find ship has turned like this and it is traveling in the direction ship has turned so in that situation the stabilized platform the orientation it still remains same this is the stabilized platform so irrespective of the rotation irrespective of the movement of the ship the uh, stabilized platform is always maintained in the original orientation when it when the ship started that is the stabilized platform that is the orientation of the platform is always maintained constant irrespective of the movement of the ship how this is achieved whenever the uh, whenever the suppose uh, the uh, ship rotates through an angle say theta then stabilized platform is rotated backwards through an same angle theta so that the uh, alignment remains same so that means uh, the ship pro ship motion and rotation about its axis is sensed by so called uh, um, uh, it is called uh, Mm. Gyroscopic, uh, gyroscope, gyroscopic, ref, gyroscopic reference. By having set of gyroscopes, it is possible to sense the rotation of the ship, and I uh, one such uh, thing is um, uh, rate integrating gyro, rate integrating, rate integrating gyro. For each axis, suppose there are uh, now for a ship uh, two directions is sufficient. So for uh, two directions x and y, you will have one accelerometer here and another accelerometer there. Two accelerometers are positioned. So this will measure the motion acceleration in the say y direction and this will measure the acceleration in the x direction. Two accelerometers are put and um, by having um, uh, two integrating gyros, we can. Um, uh, no, it is sufficient if you have one integrating zero. It is uh, just uh, measure the angular rotation. Yeah, about is it only we have to measure the angular rotation because when the ship moves in the on the surface of uh, the uh, say sea water, it if you can measure this uh, rotation about z axis, that is sufficient. So one integrating zero if you have the rotation is measured and the rotation is given to a servo motor. The servo motor will 
will bring the bring it back the stabilized platform back to its original orientation and uh, such a such a platform is always maintained inside a ship or a very or an air, aircraft in aircraft you require three axes x and y and z so instead of two you will have another one uh, to measure the perpendicular direction also so for, for taking this example of the ship now we have this stabilized platform maintained in its orientation two accelerometers so you, you will measure acceleration in two directions and vectorial addition of these two acceleration will give the final uh, uh, r integrate the acceleration in uh, in both the directions twice twice in the twice integrating the acceleration will give the displacement and vectorial addition of the twice integrated signal of this acceleration signal will give rise to actual position of the ship after it starts from the harbor that is how the accelerometers are used in locating the ship uh, or finding out the total distance after starting from a uh, harbor or for an aircraft after uh, after it takes off from the airport after certain hours how how much distance it is there you can find out by using this uh, stabilized platform plus uh, the uh, number of uh, accelerometers so that uh, that is uh, that completes more or less the portions i will just work out one or two problems yeah now the first problem is a uh, seismic pickup has omega n that natural frequency 100 radian per second and uh, xo the relative measurement between the mass and the uh, frame is measured with an instrument uh, having a range of plus or minus 2.5 millimeter with an uncertainty of that instrument is 0.025 millimeter that is 25 micron is the uh, uncertainty what is xi maximum the instrument can measure that is acceleration what is maximum acceleration and it's at uncertainty uncertainty of the acceleration measurement what it is if omega n that is 180 percent is known exactly if that is the case what should be the error we know the from error of propagation we know that uh, uh, we are first uh, we see the equation x o by k by x i 2 dot is equal to we know 1 over 1 plus d square omega square but it is uh, um, uh, assuming uh, static measurement uh, we can say is equal to 1 the 1 over d square omega r square that uh, change in acceleration is not there under static conditions it should be 1 that is this equation is obtained from 1 over 1 d square omega n square plus 2 psi d uh, by omega n plus 1 that we if, uh, neglect it uh, assuming a constant um, uh, acceleration so the it, this is the equation x o by k by x i 2 dot is equal to 1 now k is equal to 1 by omega n square so we write x i 2 dot x i 2 dot is equal to x o by k by k that is now x o, k is 1 by omega n squared so it will come x o into omega n squared substituting k by 1 by omega n squared this is the equation. So this is this is the relation between under any static conditions of acceleration x i 2 dot is equal to x o times omega n squared this is the relation between uh, relative measurement relative displacement measurement and x i 2 dot. Now there is no error in omega n only x o only there is error. So we find delta x o delta that is uh, error in acceleration measurement delta x i 2 dot is equal to root of root of delta x o that is error in uh, displacement measurement into do x o by do x do x i 2 dot that is the function with reference to do x o into whole squared plus the other parameter other parameter is known uh, is known exactly so delta omega n 0 so that will be 0 totally it will be 0 this is the equation in a sense square square root of square so we can forget this square also and square root also we can forget so delta x is this much now delta x o is given as plus or minus 0.025 it is given and uh, now do x i 2 dot by do x o is equal to from this omega n squared so into do x i 2 dot divided uh, by do x o is equal to this is a constant so into omega n squared omega n is given as 100 uh, 100 radian per second so 100 square so this is our delta x i 2 dot and this you, you find it is coming about uh, 0 0.25 0 0.25 meter per second squared it was millimeter and uh, convert into meter finally you will have this uh, error so this is error is up to two significant figures 2.25 and uh, 
and they lie up to two, se two second decimal place. Now you find out the maximum value. Now you write add here, xi2 dot maximum is equal to xo maximum into omega n squared. So now xo maximum is given as 2.5 mm, put 2.5 mm, and uh, omega n squared is 100 square, 100 square is equal to xi, uh, uh, xi2 dot maximum, and up to second decimal place. Then if you calculate, it will come as 25.00. So with the error, plus or minus 0.25 meter per second square. This is the answer for this problem. So what is the XA maximum? That is 25.00 meter per second square. And its uncertainty is plus or, uh, plus or minus 0.25 meter per second square. So this is the answer for this. And second problem, the uncertainty is 1%. So now we have this equation, XO by K, XO by K divided by XA2 dot equal to 1 over root of 1 plus beta square, 1 minus beta square whole square uh, plus 4 psi square, uh, 4 psi square beta square. So this is the magnitude equation, beta 1 minus beta square whole square. Okay. Now this is equal to 1 percent error, so the magnitude will be, magnitude ratio will be 0.99. So now substitute, um, uh, sub, uh, psi is given as 0.7 and uh, beta, beta we can be found out from this equation except beta all the other uh, no, uh, are known. So beta uh, comes about, uh, beta is equal to 0.4, it is a straightforward problem. So with this we close the chapter on acceleration measurement.